Hi, good evening. This is Asim. I am an architect. And in today's video, I'm going to use Grasshopper to design um, a small ventilation MDF cutout for my ongoing site. It's a very small um, tutorial. And uh, let's get into it. I haven't prepared anything for it, but I have got something in my mind. So first of all, let us um, look at the project. So it is an ultrasound clinic. It's a diagnostics and intervention center. And what we are going to do, uh, I'll show you the image of the model. So this is the rendered image. Um, if you can see, so this is the portion which is basically a cutout, um, which needs to be covered with a jali pattern um, by an MDF or something. Um, I've taken out the dimensions. So if if like uh, if we don't have time and like even now, actually, we do not have time, but um, since I know Grasshopper, I can very quickly design something unique instead of just um, straight lines uh, cut out. So basically, uh, the interior rectangle is the cutout. It is flushed on the top um, fall ceiling. And we'll have some portion coming out, probably two inches or four inches. Um, that we will simply bolt through the um, partition walls. So yeah, so this is the portion you can see on the top left uh, where my mouse is. That's the portion that we are basically designing. Now, um, yeah, this this portion. Uh, in in reality, it's not this big. That is just a tentative area that I've uh, left out. Uh, in reality, it is much smaller. It is 33 inches by 13.5 inches. So without further ado, let's start Rhino. It'll take some while to begin. Um, until then, let me talk about my project. Uh, it's the last phase. Just a few days are left for finishing this off. Um, so yeah, we've got the simple false ceiling lighting, uniform lighting throughout. Um, we've kept the tiles same as before, like the existing tiles. We need to buy one, um, center table. The sofa structure was there. So we just changed the upholstery and also added just a field pattern, which the client, uh, wanted. So that was there. Um, the doors are actually not of this color. They are um, green, sage green, which again, the client uh, very, very amazingly um, suggested and, and uh, held on to this color theme, color scheme of having sage green. Because even in her logo that she herself made, she had this sage green pattern. Uh, my rhino has turned on. I'm going to turn on the grasshopper, which will again take some while because it has got like 20, 30 plugins that it needs to, uh, you know, start. This will be the awards. Oh, yeah. So here also there's a change. Uh, we, we are having a sliding door. Um, so this shelf for awards has cut down to half around 30 inches, 3 zero. Um, other than that, yeah, uh, there are shelves here in these cornices, corners. So many of the awards can be shifted there. That's how we took the call. Very, very interesting project. Like this, this was a project we took up as turnkey, which means we had to deal with everything from designing to financial management to appointment of laborers, managing them, explaining to them what to do, 
getting the material, bargaining. Um, if there is some issue with the material, we look at that and so many more things. So uh, let's let's make the um, thing. Okay, okay so I'll, I'll, I'll first quickly sketch uh, what I'm trying to do. Um, okay, how do I sketch? There was some... Hmm. There was a pencil kind of thing that we can use sketch huh scribble oh no it's not scribble okay uh, oh yeah there it is okay ah uh, I, I don't think I'll edit this part, but anyways, so we've got 33 inches like this and then 13.5 inches like this. 33, 13.5. We need to convert this into mm first. And um this is the portion that we can have patterns on but for uniformity's sake i think we will do this we will take only this much um so yeah all we need to do is make a rectangle and then do whatever we want with it so we've got a rectangle and then we can have any type of perforations that we want since my entire structure uh, entire design does not have curvy linear forms we will be using geometric shapes we need to consider the structural integrity of this vent um, it should not be highly um, cut out like there, there shouldn't be any like too much of the cutouts otherwise it will be very weak um, so yeah, we will see what we can do. Something just came into the mind. Um, what was I thinking? Oh yeah, I need to confirm what uh, is the dimension that I can play with in the sense like what is this? Um, offset that we have uh, separated out let me make a quick call to my architect friend architect Sahil he is at the site right now he just sent me this image if you can see let me see if you can see that oh yeah oh no you can't see oh yeah you can see that perfect so this is oh, this is horrible so this is, uh, the board is actually glowing. I did not know that it was a glowing board. Nice. Um, so let me show you the image, not this one. Yeah, perfect. So this is that uh, board that I just showed you. This one, mm. Femiscan. So I'll quickly call him and uh, ask uh, how many inches we have left off. Or I'll, I'll just drop him a message and we'll start the scripting and let's see what he says. So I'll send him this screenshot, uh, this photo. Um, 
so i'll i've sent him the image and now i'll highlight what dimension i want in red and put a question mark ah. <laughs> and done and send mm. in hindi we would say um ye offset kitna chhodna hai okay cool so until he replies we can uh, create the script let me reduce my size put me back up here cool uh let's begin firstly let's um put this on the right put this on the left we only need to make a plan this is not like a 3d thing it's just a plan because this will be the cutout for the laser cutter this would be the drawing dwg file for the laser cutter so of course we can export it into sketchup and then use it there as well but for now let's just quickly do this so first we create a rectangle um yeah we've got the sizes 13.5 inches i want to find it in me mm 13.5 inch to m i think sahel replied mm. he just said yes um how much question mark 2 inch 4 inch um okay 13.5 inches to meter is 0.343. What is the unit that we are working on? We are working in millimeters. Um, so that will be 343 millimeters. Cool. 343. Now this is um vertical so that would be y and horizontally we've got 33 that's 0. Point, so 838 838 that's x okay so this is our board um so this is the uh, the size of the MDF, which we can change, of course, when Sahel replies. Um, now, we want to offset it down. Um, luckily, we need to offset it uh, equally from all sides, so that's great. The distance will be, let's say, if it is four inches so one two three four that'd be too much two inches is fine so that's just uh 50 mm or 51 okay so this is the left out and the design will come in this inside this one now, when, when Sahil says some other number, I can simply change it and it will uh, change. And everything else will change according to it. So that's the beauty of designing in Grasshopper. Um, now, we simply populate points. Populate 2D. I think this is a random population. Yeah. Oh, and it is uh, offsetting outside. We want it to come inside. So basically... We'll put in negative 
all right perfect now we've got random points we can do anything we want we can create a Voronoi pattern um let's reduce the count to 30 oops sorry right now there are 100 points let's create a Voronoi okay boundary is this perfect optional cell radius let's try some number 5 mm huh interesting i've never i've never done this radius thing wow that's pretty cool anyways we don't need radius um let us offset it offset curve all right distance 20 oh too much now uh, we can we can do anything like basically the uh, laser pointer will run across these lines and we can puncture out the um, cells in between and have a lattice uh, outside so yeah we can do that okay so basically the offset curve is not um, working as i wanted to i can trim down all of these to this rectangle but do we want to proceed with this is the question will this go with our design let me think I think it will be a bit off. Let's try something else. So this is one design that we have. Oops. Other one would be to create a uniform grid and then have some shapes in between. I'm thinking of using some attractor point or attractor curve to use. Um, let's do grid I think it's a rectangle grid what is this I don't know a rectangle grid 2d grid with rectangular cells so we've got this plane ah okay I need to define the extents is there any other way to do this? I mean, I can do that as well, but uh, points using a rectangle. Yeah, this would be much easier, I think. And I'll reduce, uh, increase the size to whatever I want. 300. 300 is too much. Why is it outside? I can cull points that are going outside. That's not an issue. Actually, I think this would be much better. Rectangular with extents. Because the extents can be directly used from here. Um, extent X. extent y oh minus this correct 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 we need to subtract subtraction this goes here this goes here and then this goes in extent x 
we need to multiply it by 2. So we go here, we add, where is that? Um, what? Oh, there is no, anyways, we can simply multiply. Multiplication. Do no because I, I was thinking like there was a this this item called expression which would uh, allow me to do things like that. So I mean the expression would allow me to um, write like this multiplication thing inside the node. So I basically reduce two nodes, but it is not coming up. Even here, there is no expression. Why not? Um, interesting. Oh, yeah, look look at this, this expression editor. Oh, so expression editor. I don't know. I mean, normally it, it just happens to be here. Huh, look at this one. So distance, there is expression, and then I can write here anything that I want, right? If I want to write into two, then whatever comes in will get multiplied by two. I need to put an X into two, then basically it multiplies. Otherwise, we can just leave it as it is. Similarly, I'll, I can copy paste since there is only one more item. Otherwise, I can use data trees to do the same thing. But right now it is fine. What? Um, oh, sorry. Uh, this will go into. Yeah, this is right. Uh, A. Um, wait a second. 343 goes into A. Then we subtract 51 two times from A. To get a result for extent y. Um, what? 343. Look, x is 736. And y is 343, then why is it looking like a square? Hmm. Completely unexpected issue. Plane is like it's by default x y plane. So even if I oh, that changes it. Okay, so it starts from here. It has got extent x as that. Is it this? Why is that? X size y size. What about this? size of grid cell so yeah we can put that as 10 each oh ah okay so that was the issue extent is the number of such cells basically uh, cool i know what to do we need to reduce this entire scale by to one and then it will be exactly this correct now if you want to morph it we need to write an equation that connects these two things together we will keep it squares if i put this two then everything should be divided by two so we'll we'll write division Um, put this here, put this here, put this here, copy this, 
take this put this here put this here and that should work now as i increase this these density is reducing perfect 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 i'm proud of myself but there are these small issues that happen which makes sense all right let's do 30. Oh, another way would be to simply divide the lines, intersect them, and then use those points. There are so many ways to do the same exact thing um, with fine differences. And I really want to do that, what I just said. So let's, let's just do that. It's a good practice though. Um, okay, now this, this stays here. Uh, okay, this stays there. All of this goes to trash, basically. Yeah. Um, close. Mm. Explode. Uh. Explode a curve into smaller segments. Then I'm going to divide those curves. Uh, divide curve. Let's let's first extract each different curve. Retrieve the index. Oh, sorry, not item index. We need um, item list item. One, two, three. Now we've got the four lines separate separated out. Let's take the one and yeah, these two perfect. And we can divide it in whatever manner we want. Where to put this let's group it let's group this throw it off throw it off um wait yeah um in this case we are going to have this one and this one let's reduce the count to four now we are going to connect these Let's look at the data structure. So the data is like four, five points and then five points. So yeah, five points in one and then five points in another. Ooh, what we can do is take these two branches, separate them out and then, and then connect them with each other. Um, so basically it's a line two point Create a line between two points. Um, sorry, branch, tree branch, okay. Retrieve a specific branch. I'm going to take the zero branch. Oh, okay, no, that doesn't work. Let's simplify this. Nice. Now zero should work. Hmm, perfect. And so this will be the start point. And then the same thing, copy, paste. This becomes one. Oh, sorry. One. And so will be the end point. Uh, okay, so basically it's happening like this. We need to reverse list. Uh, reverse. And it works. Perfect. Similarly, we are going to do the same thing for the above one. Tree, simplify. Uh, what simplify does is basically, oops, sorry, I'll, I'll just I'll just show you. Simplify 
um, reduces the item, what do you call that, index, like the ID of the branch. So like right now it is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, then 0, 0, 0, 2. So all these zeros are meaningless. Uh, why that happens is another, I mean, it's, it's, it's because of the previous story of the data journey that has been going through. So it creates out branches for its convenience, but, but uh, at the end it's useless. So just we can simplify it. Now let's find out the intersection points. I think it was something uh, X curve curve. Yeah, this one, this one curve A and curve B. Let's see. So we've got several points. Oh, just this much. Oh, we need to graft it. Perfect. So we graft it and then it looks at all the intersections. So we've got all the points. Now, 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 what I'm going to do is I'm going to create rectangles on these points. So I need a rectangle whose center is defined. No, not a three point rectangle, rectangle two point, no. I mean, I can create it, but I think this one it is. I think this one is right. Let's just check. No, it is still at the edge. But what we can do is shift it uh, according to the size so that we get its uh, get at its center um actually I have a better idea okay let's let's do this i've never done this um i'm going to take the centroid and then i'm going to say move to move to point let's see so we've got this rectangle i'm gonna move it centroid to these points it works okay this is much easier what i was gonna do is i was gonna shift it by 10 by 2 x and then 10 by 2 y or negative y whatever is required but this one is much easier so we've got all the rectangles at the center the size is controlled from here now, what I'm going to do is I want rectangles. I don't want to, I don't want squares. Um, again, there is no expression. I wanted expression, but it's okay. I'm simply going to say multiplication. Oh, I guess um, two to keep it simple. Simplicity is best. Um, cool. Cool. We are going to increase the offset because the rectangles are going much further away. Whew. Now, now there are so many things I can do. I can rotate it softly, like all these rectangles are rotating. Um, I can change their shapes. I can combine both of them. Uh, you know what? Let's let's do that. Let's combine it. Yeah, let's combine it. So the rectangles are gonna rotate as they move from left to right. Okay. We are going to reparameterize the length. Um. Just a second. Or do we want to have an attractor point according to which the rotation occurs as well as the size changes? I think this will be much easier and it will be a good experiment to look at what would what would come out. Like I cannot imagine what would come out. So firstly, let's create a point. Mm, okay, point. Set one point. 
somewhere around here distance two point coordinates so this is my point a and i want to find out the point the distance with every other point and this will be the factor of scaling and rotation rotation after that there is only maths involved so the uh, this is the rectangle um, that is going to scale the center will be its centroid wait a second huh oh sorry it will be this this point um sorry which one this one center is this okay no even now it's wrong um wait a second Oh, I picked up the wrong geometry. Um, this is the geometry. Ha, huh, perfect. And uh, the center is the intersection points. Great. The factor will be according to the distance. And we need to reduce that a lot because it's, it's a factor which plays in just like points. And here it is in hundreds. So let's divide it. Division. Where is division? Ah, division or we could actually simply type in slash for it to work but I'm stupid let's type in 100 and put that as factor perfect we need to increase it because there are rectangles which are still very very large nice let's hide everything for you to understand Hmm. And what there is my point. You see? Ha ha ha. Oh. Why isn't it? Oh, okay, anyways. Ha, oh, the rectangles are very small where that point is. We can we can fix that using maths um we'll have some threshold 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 thingy mm, simply add a 0 0.5 i think that should work expression perfect uh x plus 0 0.5 comet changes and now it is much more gradual and the extreme values aren't too extreme. Uh, good, good, very good. What else? We can rotate it. All right, let us do that. Let's rotate it and we'll keep it off centered for cool purpose. Uh, rotate. Now the rotation is according to. In, it is in, in radians, which is horrible. So let's first put it in degrees. Our final geometry is this. It's going to rotate uh, uh, around its um, centroid. So that will be the plane. The angle will be somewhat similar to this. So let's do that and reduce or increase. Huh. Ah, perfect, perfect. I think that's the sweet spot. Cool. So let's play in, uh, I guess, 
वन टू थर्टी राइट और राइट दैट लुक्स गुड कैन इंक्रीज द साइज परफेक्ट लुक एट दैट Isn't that cool? So I think this works. Like this makes sense. I mean, instead of writing a uh, hard coding some equation for the angle of rotation for everything, we can simply do this. Um, what I want uh, to do here is increase the length as we move towards the the point. So where is the rectangle? Is the rectangle? This is the rectangle. Um, I'm simply doing this, right? Like two multiplied by that. So instead of two, we are going to have two plus division of something. So let's uh, let's add something here. Addition. Two plus. Um. division of this and put it here and put this here oh no oh and it should be negative so that the closer you are the shorter you go the f no sorry sorry the closer you are okay the further you are the longer it will be i need to reverse it so it will be let's say five times and then we are going to subtract it so oh wow this also works nice um we put this here we put this here we put this here and increase this ha huh, this makes sense okay um so we are we are we go longer as we move towards the circle think this is good oh cool Mm, I'm trying to find out a nice position for this. I'm also thinking about the structure. I think this is okay. uh let's remove all of these oh perfect okay um this looks good what to me um me share this with my friend any other ideas um what and i won't look good i think I think this is fine. We 
Yeah, it looks okay. It looks okay. I think I don't want to reduce the scale that much. Hmm. Scale. Uh, plus zero point seven. Hmm. Then, but then it would be very weak at certain points. So I think it is fine to keep it. 0.5 cool done let's do this there is enough space everywhere cool so i mean the greatest thing about this is now if my friend architect sahil tells me that it is 900 mm i'll simply do this viola it's there any changes anything the design persists now of course if i do this and then i want more um like rectangles another row of rectangles two three rows i simply have to search for the number of divisions that i'm doing like this one and that's it and this looks so cool wow anyway so that's i think that is it um i hope you learned something out of it i mean uh, this wasn't a proper tutorial it was more of me doing it me figuring it out myself because i haven't done anything like this it's just an idea that i'm translating to fruition and it it worked out fine i think it doesn't look bad if you want to look at look at it in 3d uh you can simply extrude it and and that would be it simply boolean difference the uh thing and then that would be very easy or you don't even have to do that you simply have to export this in sketchup and then pull it off pull it up that would be much quicker mm. so yeah that is done i'll simply bake this and oh and i need to bake uh this thing oops sorry bake and i can simply put it off here so there is one design iteration and i can i can do like many more design iterations very easily so that's pretty cool yeah that looks good and then we simply export it uh, export selected into where is CAD DWG? AutoCAD? Huh, AutoCAD. And we'll name it uh, Went Dr. Almas Zero uh, One Laser Cut File. Let's put zero one at last and Dr. Almas first went laser cut zero one desktop save. Cool. So that's it. Oh, it's ten PM and um the carpenters and my architect friend Sahil is gonna be there at site till morning. Um, so they are pulling off a night to get things done as soon as possible. The project is amazing and probably I'll talk about it some other uh, video, but I think this is uh, good for now.
this video is good for now. Uh, if you need any one-on-one -on -one sessions, classes, or anything, do let me know. I am open for that. Uh, still setting things up, but I would love to take that. I already do take uh, classes in a company called Delopus in India, and I take these online sessions for a number of students uh, less frequently, but I teach uh, Grasshopper less frequently because I have work, uh, architectural work. This is purely my passion. Like this is not the, uh, like my source of income, main source of income, the main source of income is our projects, turnkey projects and all, but, uh, it's just my passion to, to use all this math that we've learned since childhood, um, and uh, use all this trigonometry and algorithms. It's very interesting and exciting. So yeah, if, if you need my help, do feel free to reach out. I would love to do, I would love to be of any use. All right, take care. Bye.